Operation Vengeance, the aerial manhunt that changed World War II. In April 1943, as World War II raged on, a covert mission was brewing that would become one of the most audacious aerial operations in military history, Operation Vengeance. This was not just a battle. It was a meticulously planned and daring gambit to take out one of Japan's top military strategists from the skies. The man at the centre of it all was Admiral Isoruku Yamamoto, the brain behind the infamous attack on Pearl Harbour. He was a figure that loomed large, a military genius whose strategies were a thorn in the side of the Allied forces. Prepare yourself for a deep dive into this gripping chapter of history as we piece together the background, unravel the intelligence gathered, relive the adrenaline fueled interception, and shed light on the unsung heroes. Finally, we'll dissect the lasting repercussions of this monumental operation. Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto stands as one of the most prominent figures in military history. Born in 1884 in Nagaoka, Japan, he was a man destined for naval greatness. Adept and intelligent, Yamamoto rapidly ascended through the ranks of the Imperial Japanese Navy. His education took him as far as Harvard University, and he served as a naval attaché in Washington, D.C., where he witnessed the burgeoning might of the United States. However, it was his strategic genius during World War II that cemented his legacy. Yamamoto was the architect behind the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, an event that shocked the world and propelled the United States into the war. He believed in the potency of aircraft carriers and aviation warfare, which was a relatively new concept at the time. Although not in favour of war against the US, once committed, he became a relentless advocate for Japan's naval supremacy. His visionary tactics were acknowledged even by his adversaries. The audacious Pearl Harbor attack made him the most wanted man for the US forces, setting the stage for the dramatic events that followed. By 1943, the tides of war were turning. The United States and its allies had begun to gain momentum in the Pacific. Yamamoto, undeterred, continued orchestrating naval strategies. But unbeknownst to him, American intelligence was making strides of their own. They had cracked the Japanese naval code and intercepted communication that revealed Yamamoto's travel plans. The American military leadership recognised that eliminating Yamamoto could deliver a significant blow to Japanese morale and cripple their naval strategies. This led to the conception of Operation Vengeance, a mission specifically designed to take down Yamamoto's aircraft. With the high risk and potential reward, Operation Vengeance was a mission balanced on a knife edge. A complex and daring plan was put into action to intercept and shoot down Yamamoto's plane, setting in motion one of the most audacious aerial ambushes in history. The stage for Operation Vengeance was set by the tireless and secretive efforts of American codebreakers. The United States had a unit named Station Hypo, under the command of Commander Joseph Rochefort. This unit focused on deciphering the Japanese naval code, known as JN-25. Through careful work they began cracking the codes, slowly unravelling the web of Japanese communications. In April 1943, their dedication bore fruit when they intercepted and decrypted a message revealing Admiral Yamamoto's detailed itinerary for an inspection tour in the Solomon Islands. This was the intelligence jackpot the US needed. The message not only gave the time and place of Yamamoto's next visit, but even the number and types of plane that would be escorting him. With this critical information in hand, the high command of the US Pacific Fleet faced a moral and strategic dilemma. Should they exploit the intelligence to target Yamamoto, thereby risking the exposure of their code-breaking success? or should they withhold action to protect their intelligence edge? After intense deliberation, the decision reached the desk of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who gave the go-ahead. Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet, then ordered the mission, recognising that eliminating Yamamoto could severely hamper Japan's war effort. The stakes were high, and the window of opportunity was narrow. A highly specialised team was assembled with the best fighter pilots, and detailed plans were laid out for a high-risk operation. This would be one of the longest and most challenging fighter intercept missions of the Second World War. Operation Vengeance was boldly planned. A squadron of P-38 Lightning fighters, specifically chosen for their long-range capabilities, were tasked with the mission. The operation was to be carried out by the 339th Fighter Squadron under the command of Major John Mitchell. To avoid detection, a circuitous route over open ocean was charted, and the P-38s were stripped of excess weight to make room for additional fuel. The pilots were given strict instructions. The mission was to shoot down Yamamoto's plane. There was to be no engagement with enemy fighters unless absolutely necessary. On the morning of April 18, 1943, the squadron of P-38s took off from the Guadalcanal. With Major Mitchell leading the way, they embarked on their daring mission. 
Flying just above the ocean waves to avoid radar, the squadron reached the airspace over Bougainville, where Yamamoto's plane was expected. As they arrived, they spotted two Japanese bombers escorted by fighter planes. In the ensuing aerial combat, Lieutenant Rex Barber made a daring run at the lead bomber, hitting it with a barrage of machine gun fire and causing it to crash into the jungle below. Meanwhile, another P-38 piloted by Lieutenant Besby F. Holmes downed the second bomber. The American pilots, having accomplished their mission, returned to Guadalcanal. While they knew they had downed two bombers, the identity of the victims remained unconfirmed. However, the next day, Japanese radio announced the death of Admiral Yamamoto in a plane crash. The mission was a success. Operation Vengeance had achieved its objective. For the United States, it was a major victory. For Japan, the loss of Yamamoto was a significant blow to their naval capabilities and morale. A crucial yet often overlooked aspect of Operation Vengeance and World War II as a whole is the invaluable contribution of Japanese Americans, particularly the Nisai. Nisai refers to the second generation Japanese Americans born and raised in the United States. At a time when their loyalty was unjustly questioned, with many confined in internment camps, the Nisei stood resolute in their dedication to America. In the shadows of the Pacific War Theatre, Nisei linguists played a pivotal role in the Military Intelligence Service, MIS. These linguists were essential in translating and interpreting Japanese military communications, including those encrypted in complex codes. Their deep understanding of the Japanese language and culture made their skills unparalleled. One of the key contributions by the Nisei linguists was their role in deciphering the Japanese naval code. Their work significantly complemented the code-breaking efforts, which eventually led to the interception of Yamamoto's itinerary. Furthermore, the Nisei's continued involvement throughout the war was helped in gaining a deeper understanding of the enemy's intentions, strategies, and morale. Their work is said to have saved countless lives and greatly contributed to the shortening of the war. While the pilots and commanders are often lauded for their roles in daring missions such as Operation Vengeance, it is vital to recognize the silent warriors behind the scenes. The Nisei linguists exemplified unwavering patriotism and dedication, even in the face of discrimination, and their intelligence efforts were instrumental in the success of Operation Vengeance and beyond. The death of Admiral Isoruko Yamamoto sent shockwaves through both the Japanese and Allied forces. For the Japanese, it was a staggering loss. Yamamoto was not only a brilliant strategist, but also a symbol of naval prowess and national pride. His demise was met with national mourning, and the Japanese government posthumously promoted him to Marshal Admiral. On the other side, the Allies viewed Yamamoto's death as a significant triumph. The United States military considered it a measure of retribution for Pearl Harbor and a morale boost for the troops. However, within the US, details of the operation remained classified for years. The elimination of the Admiral had a profound strategic impact on the course of World War II in the Pacific. Yamamoto was the driving force behind Japan's early naval strategies. His loss left a leadership vacuum that was hard to fill. His vision, tactical acumen, and ability to inspire and command respect from his subordinates were unique. Without his guidance, the Japanese naval forces struggled to innovate and adapt to the changing dynamics of the war. Additionally, Operation Vengeance had a psychological impact. It demonstrated to the Japanese military that the US had sophisticated intelligence capabilities and the audacity to target high-ranking officers. This undoubtedly rattled the confidence of the Japanese leadership. For the Allies, Yamamoto's death symbolized a boost in morale and momentum. It showcased the effectiveness of their intelligence operations and demonstrated their commitment to carrying out daring missions. The operation served as a catalyst for increased aggressiveness and determination in the Pacific campaign, as the Allies pressed their advantage in the ensuing battles, gradually tilting the balance of power in their favor. In retrospect, Operation Vengeance is often cited as a pivotal moment in the Pacific theater of World War II. It demonstrated the combination of intelligence, innovation, and audacity. The mission continues to be studied in military academies for its precision and execution. Admiral's legacy, meanwhile, remains complex. He is remembered as a brilliant tactician and a loyal servant to his country, even though he had reservations about going to war with the United States. As for Operation Vengeance, it remains a testament to the lengths nations will go to in wartime and the immeasurable value of intelligence in shaping the outcome of conflicts. It stands as a bold and decisive undertaking in the annals of World War II, setting its sights on none other than Admiral Isoruko Yamamoto, the brilliant strategist who orchestrated the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor. The mission was an extraordinary display of synergy, as it harnessed unparalleled intelligence gathering with a notable contribution from the Nisai linguists of Japanese descent, and married it with an impeccably executed operation. By successfully neutralizing Yamamoto, Operation Vengeance not only dealt a crippling psychological blow to the Japanese forces, 
but also signified a watershed moment in the Pacific campaign, as it held it a shift in momentum and marked the beginning of a relentless push by the Allied forces. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey. Your viewership is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe.